Hello and welcome to the Car Care channel. In today's video, we have a 2016 Toyota Camry four cylinder LE trim. This car is pristine. It has really been taken care of by the owner. Oil changes on time every 5,000 miles since the car has very little miles when they bought it. So they wanted to have the PCV valve replaced. And we're making this video to show you that you can actually replace the PCV valve in this engine without removing the intake manifold. It's really difficult, it's a really tight spot, but I will do my best with the filming because we have the best camera woman standing behind the camera. We'll do our best to show you how to replace it without removing the intake manifold. And we're also gonna replace the spark plugs because uh, it just crossed over 100,000 miles and the owner just wants them replaced. I told them you can wait to 120, they want them replaced. It's their car, their money, their decision. So we're also, Follow up to the previous video where we looked at a similar engine on that 2011 Camry that burns oil. When we pull the spark plugs, we're gonna stick our camera real quick to see how does a pristine engine cylinder wall look like in this 2AR FE right after this. All right, folks, so we were uh, going for the uh, Hollywood style, lift the car up, pull the wheel off, like everything is rainbows and butterflies, but welcome to the real world. This wheel is seized on this hub, and what boils my blood is the owner just told me that a dealership recently had this wheel off to put new brakes. You know, a little dab of grease or maybe a little cleanup on the hub would have been nice, especially when you had the rotors off, but I guess not, that was too much. This is a major safety hazard, and here's why. You're in the middle of nowhere, you get a flat tire, you got that nice spare tire in the trunk. Well, how are you gonna get this wheel off in the side of the road? Right now, we got some PB blaster here, hoping to loosen it up. I've been pounding at it with a hammer, nothing. Let's hope the PB blaster, and I'm just gonna keep fighting it until it comes off, and then we'll talk about how you're gonna clean it, just as an added bonus for this video. Right, so after a little battle, we got the wheel off. Let's, let's pull it out, and we'll talk a little bit about this. The problem is Toyota has an interference wheel to hub fitment. They just, that's what locates the wheel in the center actually, not the lug nuts. So with the rusty land, like in Illinois with salt, this seizes on the hub. All you gotta do is just clean this with a brush, clean that with a brush. We'll do that before we put this wheel back. But if you ever have this situation, put some kind of frost penetrant. PB Blaster works really good. A little bit on the expensive side, but it works really good. Spray it on, let it sit for half an hour, and then you're gonna take a hammer and pound the wheel at the bottom. Do not hit the wheel. You're gonna hit the tire. I see people do it on the wheel. You could bend the wheel like that in aluminum wheels. You could actually crack the wheel, so be careful with that. Just hit it at the bottom, and you gotta make sure that your car is secure, because you start pounding on the car like that, you can actually drop it off a jack stand, so be very careful. But let's uh, continue on with our uh, PCV valve adventure, because in order to do this PCV valve, you need to lift the car up, take the passenger wheel off, and then we're gonna remove this little cover here and we'll show you the rest. Let me remove this cover and we'll continue. The clip is not missing on this one. That's your first sign that this car has not been uh, tampered with is the word I'm gonna use. Let me show you what we're working with here. First, let's take a look at the, what the PCV valve is and uh, we say special things to the engineer that designed this because uh, it's not, not great. Do you see that hose right there at the top? That's what goes to the PCB valve. We're going to disconnect that hose and reach in and get the PCB valve out. I'll show you the whole process, but this is not for the, how should I say, the faint of heart. It's very difficult and it's very tight and it takes a lot of 
hand-mind coordination because you're working blind. You can't see anything. S on some models, like the hybrid ones, you actually see it from the bottom. But on this model, you can't, you can barely just see the hose right there. It's really not a good angle and you're going to have to fight it a little bit. So be ready for that fight. Otherwise, just pull the intake manifold and do it the easy way. Kind of the easy, long route. We're going to do it the hard, short route. It's going to be a very difficult five minutes to get this guy out. So let's do it. So first, we're going to want to prep a little bit here. This is a crank position sensor. Let's unplug it. And then you have a bracket right here held in by a 10 millimeter bolt right here, that 10 millimeter bolt. Let's go ahead and take that so we can move this bracket out of our way. Take our bracket off. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. There you go. So now this, this whole thing is loose. You see it right there. We're gonna move it to the side just to get it out of our way. Now this is the part where you're gonna go completely by feel. I'm gonna try my best here to show you what to do. You're going to reach in and you're going to grab the hose for the PCV valve. You're going to pull it gently. You're not going to yank it because you can't really get to the clamp. If you can get to the clamp, move the clamp out of the way because the clamp is facing up. You're just going to slowly walk it off until it pops out. Alternate hands until you find that good spot where you have enough leverage. There we go. See that hose? You will never be able to get this clamp off, but if you maneuver it enough, it'll actually come out and not get damaged. One thing I will say about this hose for the PCB valve, if you have 2010, 2011 Toyota Camry, if you have a 2009, 2010, 2011, all the way to 2012 RAV4 with this engine, get, have a hose like this ready. The likelihood of this getting brittle and damaged is very high on these models. And as, if you're watching this video in the future, if you feel this hose is very brittle and hard, get one before you start this job. Because this hose goes all the way to the top, it's very easy to replace, but it's easily damaged. So if you get it damaged, you're gonna need to replace it. Now set this hose to the side. And where the hose is, just feel in with your hand. You're gonna actually feel the PCV valve. I can feel it, I'm touching it right now. So let me get a wrench and we'll show you the setup so you can get it out. So you're gonna get your life-saving socket set ready right now. Some of these are 19 millimeter, some of them are 17. Lesser are 17, more of them are 19. What you're gonna to wanna to do is get your new OEM we are not putting an aftermarket one here. Do not put an aftermarket PCV in these. You're gonna get your new one, check the size, and that's how you'll know. But some of them, very few, will, the new one will be 19, the old one will be 17. So you're, these are the two sizes. You're gonna want a four inch extension. This could vary in some models. You know, if you're working on a four cylinder Highlander, for example, that'll be a little different, but you're gonna to want to go by feel, you're gonna set the socket on the PCV valve, and you want enough clearance to put your ratchet in to loosen it. That's gonna be your determining factor here. So I already tested this on this one, this is the right size, because this will vary by model. So wish us luck, and you wanna be very patient for this job, because this will be 100% working by feel, and you will not see anything of what you're working on, and tr trust me, Taking it off is not the hard part. So you're gonna reach in with your hand. You're gonna feel, I want you in this exact position. You're gonna feel where your PCV valve is. Show me, yeah, show me. You're gonna feel with your hand where your PCV valve is. I can feel the tip of it. And now you're gonna walk your socket. Right on top of it. And when it goes over it, just push it in. Make sure it engages fully. Now I feel it engaged fully. You hold it with this hand, get your ratchet, and 
shorter ratchets will be better, but you want a flexible one like this one. Do you see how this one flexes? So you can count, contour it to how this space is. Now I got it on, I'm going to break it loose. Now the best part about this PCB valve is it has thread lock or sealer. So uh, they can be a little tight. So you can't really just break it loose and take it the rest of it by hand. But let's try it. Yeah, this one came loose now. When you take it out, take it out softly so you won't drop it. And voila. <laughs> this is car care not laughed about this one because it is a voila because this is a three hour job at I don't know, $140 an hour. That's a small chunk of change that you just got out in, what, five minutes maybe of aggravation. Not really aggravation. I've done hundreds and hundreds of these, but trust me, you're going to have a hard time doing this if you've never done a similar job. The key thing with this job is you're working by feel. As a starting mechanic, you got to learn to work by feel, not see everything you're working on. Your hands need to be your eyes sometimes, and this is one of those cases. Here's the PCB valve. Let's move on to the installation. New PCB valve. You're going to install it. And again, this is the hard part, getting this started without cross-threading it, because you're working in a very tight space. You're working by feel. This takes a little bit of, of practice and experience to start bolts out by hand without cross-threading them, because this will be a little tight going in, but not. there is a difference between cross-threading a thread and the thread going in a little tight. You can't really clean it. It's a very tight space. So here it goes. You're going to feel in with your hand. You know, barely just touch the area where the thing goes. And this will take a few tries. You'll drop it a few times. And that's okay. So now I got it started, let's start tightening it because it does start and then get tight and most people associate that with cross threading, but you have to be very careful when you tighten it. You want the effort, turning effort to be consistent, not turn a little bit then get really tight, don't force it if that's the case. And you're gonna, if you're gonna torque this to spec, I've done hundreds of these I have a muscle memory of the torque. If you want to torque this to spec, you're going to need a really small torque wrench and you're going to want to be very patient because, again, this is not the job for... You want to be a little bit more experienced to do this job. All right, now that we got the valve in, you're going to go celebrate. But before you do, you still have to put the hose on. But before you put the hose in, to make life easier, because you can't really move this clamp and attach it. It's, there's just not enough space. You're going to use a little bit of silicone spray, just, just a little bit, just to make that hose go on easier. And then again, you're going to feel the tip of the PCV valve. You're going to route your hose right. There you go. You're going to make sure that hose clips all the way in and you feel it because the hose will be molded to the, to the shape of the PCB valve. When you push it in, it'll just like make a clip toward the end. Now we're in. Life is good. Hard parts is over. Now we're going to bring back our wire harness. Attach it back. Connect our crank position sensor back. And 
that's one job completed. How about that? Three hours of labor this job pays. If you take it to a shop, cheapest shop in the US, probably $90, $100. That's a potential savings of 300 bucks or more for five, 10 minutes of extreme aggravation and working by feel, training your, your hands to be your eyes in this case. Before we put the wheel back though, we're gonna to wanna to deal with that situation. But before that, whenever you work on cars and you leave uh, fingerprints all over the rotor, make sure you wipe them down in case there is like standing oil or something that's not very good for the pads. So make sure we give it a good wipe and wipe down that uh, PB blaster as well. So there's many ways to do this. Easiest way is a little metal brush. You're going to go here, give the hub a good clean. You can get a wire wheel and start wiring away at it, but not everybody has this at home. But then the part that most people miss is actually the inside of the wheel. We're going to want to wire brush this as well. And now, before you put this on, I'm going to use some silicone caliper grease. This is basically the same stuff you use for your brakes. You're just going to take a little bit, put it right on the hub. Again, remember, this is a high temperature area. You can't put any type of grease. It needs to be the same. You can literally use the same stuff you use to do your brakes. Just put them right here. They'll keep the surface protected and lubricate it. So now the next time we go, to take this wheel off, it should come right out. Now that we got this taken care of, let's put our wheel back and move on to the spark plugs and peeking inside the cylinder. Let's pull the spark plugs. Something about the uh, 16 Camry, it actually has improved coil connectors so they don't break as much. So that's really a nice touch from Toyota to update these because they used to be, you touch them, they snap. All right, so these spark plugs are actually non-original spark plugs. They have been replaced at some point. The way you know that is if you look at the tip of the spark plug, the original plugs will have some kind of mark here. These are actually not original. They don't look too bad. I mean, that's a pretty clean burning engine right there. A little bit of carbon here and there, but that's normal. This one has a little bit more. But this is a very healthy engine. Let's, uh, let's get our boroscope and take a peek inside real quick so you can see what a good engine is supposed to look like. Let's look at cylinder number three. So this is a very nice and clean piston. You can see the areas, I can read the letters off of it. Folks, an internal combustion engine is not gonna be squeaky clean, never. But this is, if you see this, you're doing pretty good. But more importantly, we're gonna take a look at the valves, see how that's looking. So there is that loose carbon. That is normal if you see that, but look at the area in between the valves. That is very clean. This valve is extremely clean. You can even read the numbers on it. This one as well. And these two, they have a little bit of carbon, but not excessive. This one as well, a little bit, nothing excessive. All these blackness that you see that that these chunks, these are all loose, and you can see that they're flaking off. And basically, this is the what the Italian tune-up does. You go on the highway, you floor it, all this stuff will fall off, and that's very normal. And this engine is very clean. Let's look at the cylinder wall real quick. That looks very nice and clean. I'm not concerned. This thing doesn't burn a drop of oil. Yep. Nothing, and this, this piston is actually all the way down. You see that little mark here? It could be this car sat for a while, and this is where the resting position was. This is the kind of stuff you can't really tell exactly what this mark is, but engine runs fine. We're not gonna be concerned about it. That is just 
the calls that you have to make when you look at it because we're not going to tear an engine just to find what this mark is when we have no issues so could be car was in storage and that's the resting position it could be just you know you run it once and it's gone so i'm not concerned about this this engine looks pristine so folks you've seen how to replace the nightmare of a pcb valve it's actually not a nightmare it's just a difficult spot you're gonna suffer for five ten minutes and save yourself a lot of money this is not for someone that just started tinkering with their cars if you just did your first oil change ever on your car by yourself, this is not a job to tackle. If you've done spark plugs, water pumps, alternators, you've been the last three, four cars you've owned, you've always worked on them and did minimal stuff. You didn't pull engines out and rebuild them, but you did little stuff. That would be a job you can tackle. But the main thing is, you know yourself, you know your skills. This is more of a by feel job. You're gonna do a lot of work and seeing with your hands than you do with your eyes. So if you're not comfortable with that, don't tackle that job, have a professional do it. It's a simple job, but it can get aggravating. So take your time. This is a full weekend job when you're really rested and happy to do. Spark plugs are super simple on this. This, this engine is in really good shape. Uh, the owner have, this car has, actually I'm not sure exactly the miles. Let's go look at it real quick. This car has 113,948. Very clean inside, really taken care of. Example, this is a car from a really good viewer that brought me this car. This is his daughter's car, and he's uh, trying to make sure they have no issues. The car is in really good shape outside and inside. It's an LE Camry. This is, folks, this is one of the best Camry models to buy, it's like 15 all the way to 17. They're super simple, super DIY friendly. Not a model that is difficult and has a lot of common problems, not really. This is really a good car to buy, you know. If you don't want the latest and the greatest in technology, but you want some technology like Bluetooth radio, backup camera, this basic stuff, this has it all and this is a really solid car. But do not buy one that has bad service history, especially on those oil changes. This engine is a great engine, but don't take care of this engine and we'll start drinking oil and now we have problems. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.